This week on the Mr. Throwback Thursday podcast, we bring you a fresh in peace, Motley Crew, high school reunions, judges with questions, judges with answers, Alaskan Superman, Rock Him versus the Juggalos. That is not a Netflix movie. A new artist of the month, and we world premiere music from friend of the show, Groove. What else? Let's listen. It's not just any day. It's Mr. Throwback Thursday. All these kids want to get on and shit. You are now about to witness the strength of street knowledge. Help, I'll be dead. That's a count of three. I want y'all to tell me the name of my DJ. One, two, three. And now, here's your hosts, Bill Winters and Mr. Throwback Thursday himself, Jamie Robinson. It screen. has been a very big 24 hours in Mr. Throwback Thursday land. It Welcome has. to Mr. Throwback Thursday, <laughs> episode 553. Your two favorite idiots bringing you all the hip hop news that you've come to expect on a weekly basis. Bill up in New York, Jamie down in Virginia. How are you, my friend? I am well. I am well. Oh, Ken's here, so uh, we should just do that now. No, but we're not. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yes, we are. We are doing our giveaway today. So, of course, everybody else is now going to sign out because Ken has arrived. <laughs> yeah. And uh, for the record, we uh, we raised one thousand five hundred and ten dollars. For very nice. The Hip Hop Museum. Uh, I will very be, nice. I was I did not do the donation before the show because I told everybody they had up until showtime to donate. So as soon as the show is over. I will go and make that donation and I will post it so everybody knows I wasn't stealing their money. Yes. <laughs> yeah, so we thanks not- to all of you who uh who kicked in on that. Uh we give you, you know, a little piece of dried mud with our pictures on them. Mm-hmm. Uh and you gave the hip hop museum a bunch of money. Yes, Cranky, I got you in there. You did indeed, and we're very, very excited. We had our TBT FFL draft last night. We did. I want to thank everybody who joined, including the two new entrants to the league this year. Yes. Mrs. Throwback Thursday and Mr. Cranky Pants. <laughs> indeed. <laughs> hey, did we ever debut the craziness that Cranky Pants did? Uh, we did not, but I may have here on the screen, not that page, up here on the screen. So everybody knows... <laughs> And if they don't know, it's kind of sad that you don't know by now. Uh, On our website, MrStorbackThursday.com, there is a tab. It is the one, two, three. It is the fourth tab in. And I talk about it every week. You do. And it says the Posse Wall of Fame. And now at the tip of the top of the wall, the Posse Wall of Fame, is Mr. Cranky Pants with his brand new fresh tattoo in the, uh, the style of... The license plate hats, mm-hmm. Mr. Crank Paints, TBT Posse member since 2022. Top of the heat, man. He is now Mr. Inky Pants. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think that goes over as well. <laughs> that, that, no, no, that, that actually sounds like a medical condition. You should probably see a doctor about that. <laughs> but yeah, so the first... That the I first know ever existence. TBT Posse tattoo. Yeah, yes. It's the first one I know of. Yeah, I've not gone out and gotten my TBT tattoo yet because I still have to convince the wife that I need another tattoo. Yeah. <laughs> but that is on the wall. But congratulations and and thank you very much, Cranky, for uh, inking yourself and repping the posse everywhere you go. Absolutely. You can no longer um, ever, ever wear cranky pants. You can only now wear cranky shorts. Because you yes. have to rep us everywhere. Yes. He will be Mr. Cranky Shorts. <laughs> <laughs> so he's going to have to change his, t- his tag on here. Well, I guess shorts are, are short for short pants. Yes. So shorts are pants. Yes. Not all pants are shorts. No. But all shorts are whole pants. whole square rectangle thing. Yeah. Yes. But anyway. So, <laughs> a gas station we passed. Indeed. When do we want to do this drawing? Later. After... Uh, at least after hip hop headlines, possibly right. after woo news. I'm not sure how I'm feeling yet and how long I want to make people stay. That sounds like a plan. 
So, oh, by the way, yes, um, we we said we're going to have a fresh in peace. I want to non hip hop related. Just throw this out to you. Don't drink and drive, please. I do not. Please. Do that. Um, those of you who know my affinity for the sport of hockey, we lost a uh, uh, a great hockey player this week. Um, Johnny Goudreau and his brother. Mm -hmm. who were home in their state of New Jersey. I'm not even going to pick on New Jersey because of the the direness of this Um, home for their sister's wedding. Going to be groomsmen in their, in her wedding struck and killed by a drunk driver as they were riding bicycles back from the rehearsal dinner. Um, Guy was drunk. Mm -hmm. If you can afford to go out and buy beers, you can afford a fucking Uber. Last night after our draft, I spoke to one of our TBT football league members who yes. was performing his his draft from a bar and had quite a few uh, intoxicating beverages in him. And I told him, I he said, you come down and your first one's on me. And I said, no, but here's the deal. If you get too bad and you can't drive, you text me again and yeah, I will come, come over out. your ass home. Exactly. So there's no earthly reason to drink and drive. Just throwing that out there. I've seen too not much. Not in the 2020s. There's not now. No, no, there's, there's never been a reason for it, but especially now that there are so many, well, I mean, I'm saying so many ways that you can in the 2020s find another way. You can get one of those stupid lime scooter things. <laughs> Which technically, if you were driving that, you're, if you're on you're the technically street, technically still, yeah, if you're on the street, which, there's, but you know what? If, I'm if saying, there's there, are, any, there are a multitude of ways yes. where you are not powering a motor vehicle. And besides, I used to make a lot of money driving drunk people around when I was yeah. not drinking. <laughs> you take five, six people home and tell each one that you need $20 for gas. Yeah. <laughs> you can, look. Drunk people have no reservations about giving you their money. So they do not. <laughs> and that twenty dollars you spent to get home is a lot cheaper than you know paying for a lawyer. So yeah. <clears throat> don't drink and drive. That's don't all I'm that. gonna say. Don't do that no more. And uh thank you everybody for joining us for the draft last night. Let's have a good football season. Yes, good time. Let's the draft. get let's get going. With some hip hop headlines to start episode 553. That would be nice. So if you would be so kind, would you please hit me with a little of that Triple H? Yay, yay. This is Hip Hop Headlines brought to you by Mr. Throwback Thursday. We'll get on it. It's your sign. It is my toy. And my toy is going to start with a fresh in piece that we found out about a couple days ago. Yeah. Um, Fat Man Scoop, former Hot 97 radio personality mm-hmm. and entertainer, has passed away. After being rushed to the hospital following a medical emergency on stage while performing at Hamden Town Center Park in Hamden, Connecticut, Friday evening, August 30th. Uh, Isaac Freeman, the third collapsed on stage while performing, was administered CPR before being transported to a hospital where he later unfortunately passed away at the age of younger than both of us, mm-hmm. 53 years old. Well, same age well, same as you. As me, yeah. Same as you right now. And, you know, a year younger than me as of three weeks ago. Yeah. Scoop's tour manager, DJ and producer, Birch Michael, also known as Pure Cold, confirmed Which is the much sad better than news. Birch. Huh? Which is a better name than Birch Michael. Yes. Birch Beer is a good name. Mm-hmm. Birch Beer is a good soda. Um and just un- unreal. I don't know. 
I'm sure there's going to be an autopsy. Right. And there will be cause of death probably released before we release on Thursday. But, you know, it's not we're not going to update this. So. And then uh, Fat Man Scoop, his family confirmed it. Um, last night, the world lost a radiant soul, a beacon of light on the stage in life. He was not just a world class performer. He was a father, brother, uncle and a friend. He was laughter in our lives, a constant source of support, unwavering strength and courage. And uh, as we mourn the loss of Fat Man Scoop, we also celebrate his remarkable life, countless lives he touched, his legacy is of love and brightness. It will reside in our hearts and memories forever, according to the statement from his family. Mm-hmm. Um, that's that's a tough one to swallow, man. It is. <laughs> 53. Um, on stage when it happened. And, and I don't, I don't want to say that's the way he probably wanted to go. Nobody wants to go. Nobody wants to go. Right. But, but you know, in the, the grand scheme of things, if you're not home surrounded by family, doing mm-hmm. what you love on stage would be the optimal way mm-hmm. to go. I would, would say would be an would be an acceptable alternative. Yeah. I would think. Yeah. Um. Yeah. And this is. Uh, this is this one's tough. Yeah. He um sounded like from from a video that was posted, Scoop was shirtless. He walked from the front of the stage to the back. He struggled to climb on the platform. He said, Ham didn't make some noise. If you came to party, he took a long pause, said make some noise with his words badly slurred, and then collapsed on the ground behind the DJ booth. So there there's there's video of it. Unfortunately, somebody in the crowd took video of it and probably because they were watching the show through their phones like most people do. Right. But uh it's it's a little disheartening to see. Um we wish all the best to his family. Um try to make sense out of this whole thing for him. But uh, Fat Man Scoop, Isaac Freeman, passed on at the age of 53 years old. And on behalf of Mr. Throwback Thursday, we offer a moment of silence. Yay, yay, yay. And speaking of silence, as in something that nobody needed to hear, <laughs> let's start hip hop headlines. Let's do that. You sent me this earlier this week. I did because I was not going to be the only one who had to put up with it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. 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 But, the, but the best part about this article is in the title. Canceled Motley. EP. <laughs> Motley Boys is how you've titled it. Yes. <laughs> Motley Crew with the umlauts still over the O <laughs> well, and the U for some <laughs> stupid reason. Makes it Mertley Kerr. I don't know how it works. <laughs> Have announced their canceled EP. Oh, no. <laughs> with a cover of a song made famous by Beastie Boys. Yes. Mertley Kerr is <laughs> very much an Ermagerd situation here. It's <laughs> have announced this EP produced by Bob Rock because that's a real name. Yeah. Arriving early October following their 2019 soundtrack to their biographical film Dirt, which is where they should have been left under, mm-hmm. not to mention 2021's. 40 years cassette box set Are there because in there? 2021 <laughs> cassette was the way to go with uh, that. Hey, I was still listening. Not to crew, but to cassettes. <laughs> Are there umlauts Canceled. over the E in, in no. years? <laughs> no. How about the A? <laughs> there are no more umlauts other than in the name. Damn it. Canceled features the already released Mick Mars less do- dogs of war. Yeah, Mick Mars who was the lead guitarist for Motley Crue. And, you know, the, the one who looked like uh, a monster. Yes. <laughs> like even out of his makeup and gear and every, he just looked like a monster. <laughs> well, he was not on dogs. No, Cause he war. said, I'm not doing that. <laughs> 
He's probably also 87 years old. <laughs> probably. <laughs> they have released a cover of Beastie Boys Fight for Your Right to Party. Now, every member of Motley Crue is older than us, right? <laughs> By multiple years. <laughs> okay, let me let me give a little touch here. Because we were listening to them in high school. Yes. You see, do I have this one muted? Of course I have this muted. Please. It probably should be. Tommy, six, five, let's make some noise. Kick it. Is John Five playing guitar with them? Yes. Holy shit. <laughs> I don't know why you do six that. and John Five. Okay, that's enough. Molly Crew. Okay, I, I will say as a um, music lover, um, John Five is an incredible guitarist. Uh, he used to be with Marilyn Manson. But as, as he plays with Rob Zombie, as a guitarist, mm -hmm. John Five is incredible. Um, as a to answer your question, by the way, Vince Neil is sixty three. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Nikki Six is sixty five. Mm -hmm. You you should not still be going by Nikki Six when you are old <laughs> enough to collect Social Security. <laughs> At that point, you are Frank Carlton Serafino <laughs> Fernanda Junior. <laughs> Tommy Lee the baby is of the bunch. 61. Yeah, yeah, he's the baby of the bunch. <laughs> you can see he is the baby of the bunch. And also the only one to expose his penis on a on a video. That, that you're aware of. <laughs> that I'm aware of. And Mick Munster Mars <laughs> is 73 years old. I told you old. that dude was old. <laughs> yeah. He's like, we're going to fight. <laughs> For our right to go to bed early. <laughs> well, look, so I don't know if you've seen any of these Vince Neil recent performance videos where he's on stage and just doesn't even know the words to his own songs and I, I mumbles didn't and like, garbles. And <laughs> I didn't like Motley Crue when they were huge. I liked Motley Crue. No, follow me now. I like Motley Crue when the me now. Shout at the Devil album came out. <laughs> and then like select songs off of the next album or two. And then I forgot they existed. <laughs> I never liked Vince Neil's voice. I thought it was too. Um, if, if a voice could sound like barbed wire, <laughs> Vince Neil sounds like barbed wire. Yeah. They have a song called Live Wire. I don't know if that one counts. <laughs> no, because that that's garbage too. Um, <laughs> and Jamie co-signed. Yes, Billy, uh, Billy, <laughs> Billy watched it. <laughs> Jamie co-signed. <laughs> we will never ever get past <laughs> no. NY Oil Cool Kim just decimating me. But you know, my wife wears that T-shirt more than I do now. <laughs> I don't quite know why, yes, but uh, she loves the Billy Booty Hole Brown t-shirt. Kim has promised me that he's going to send us a picture of him wearing it. Uh, he said, didn't he say he was going to wear it in a video or he something? Did, yes. Yeah, but he oh, will go man. on the Posse Wall of Fame right under Mr. Cranky Pants. Oh, if he absolutely. Does, or Mr. Cranky absolutely. Shorts. Absolutely. <laughs> So anyway, yes. Motley Crue said in a joint statement, it was really great getting in the studio and working on some tracks together. What started out as a couple of demo ideas turned into this EP produced by Bob Rock. <laughs> yes. The, the famous we, Bob Rock. <laughs> Is he from Fraggle Rock? I, I, would, <laughs> I would much rather listen to Schoolhouse Rock. <laughs> well, hey, there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> Conjunction Junction. Cool Kim was talking about Schoolhouse Rock. Cool Kim was talking about, see, it mm -hmm. all comes back. Full circle, man. <laughs> we look forward to getting back into the studio again soon and writing more new music as well. No. <laughs> this EP consists of three songs. Yeah. Fight for Your Right, Dogs of War, and Canceled. Yeah. The, that is very much more a 12-inch single. <laughs> with added selections. 
the comments to this article are gold. Not since Madonna's cover of American Pie has the world less needed to hear a cover of a <laughs> seminal song. Yeah. <laughs> Motley Crue are some of the last people on earth whose opinions I want to hear about cancel culture. A flaccid cover version of one of the Beastie's worst songs, Hard Pass. <laughs> I imagine the Beasties feel about that the way Dela feels about me, myself, and I, and the way Biz then, felt about Just a Friend. And, and then somebody says, what, were you expecting a thoughtful reimagining of <laughs> Bodhisattva Val from these yahoos? Oh, I'm sorry. These yahoos. Yahoo. Yes, thank you. <laughs> And the guy says, I haven't expected anything of Motley Crue ever since 1990. That said, a, co a crew cover of Bodhisattva <laughs> Val would certainly have rocked way harder than this slop. <laughs> Goes right next to their flaccid cover of Anarchy in the UK. Uh, <laughs> and they said that at least that's a weak cover of a good song. This is just embarrassing. It's rough. Who goes to halftime in the chorus for this song? <laughs> <laughs> and then somebody with the name of Hot Fresh Garbage, I'm sure, <laughs> did not put the sarcastic font on. 2024 was shaping up to be a horrible year for everyone until this until. event happened. This is something we can all enjoy and agree that it is wonderful. It is wonderful <laughs> indeed. I'm going to fight for my right not to listen to this crap. <laughs> <laughs> this sucks balls. Okay, there you go. There you go. That's, That's that is exactly what I would have said had I <laughs> said it, had I posted a comment. <laughs> I saw this story and before I clicked on it, I said to myself, there is no way it will be fight for your right. And sure enough, it was fight for your right. <laughs> then I quickly realized, how could it not be that song with these morons? And there is something blatantly creeper about a 65 year old washed up singer covering this song. Yeah. <laughs> and he's I mumbling haven't through it, I'm sure. <laughs> I couldn't get through the whole song, so I don't know. <laughs> This is the best one. I haven't heard pure unadulterated shite of this degree in a while. Thanks, Motley boys. Parentheses. Please imagine an umlaut over all the O's in this sentence. Because <laughs> I don't know how to make my keyboard do that. <laughs> but he spelled umlaut properly. Well, yeah. Well, spell check's a wonderful thing. It but is. the fact that it wouldn't be funny if there was an umlaut over the U and umlaut. <laughs> That'd be Ermlot. Ermler. There's two U's. Yes, of course. <laughs> Ermager is Mertley Kerr. That's why I always called Josh Getz. I call him Gertz. Yes. <laughs> and who was Lunchbox? That's Josh. That was Josh, too. Yes. yes. But his last name is spelled G O E T Z. And I said, yes. you need to throw an umlaut on there so I can call you Gertz. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hot new hip hop brings us this. It does. Can we just call this hypocrisy? We can do whatever you'd like. <laughs> you called it L Boogie Reunion. Yes. I'm going to call it hypocrisy. Okay, player. Um. There seems to be a little bit of a divide in the Fuji's camp, and most of the blame is falling on L Boogie Ms. Lauren yes, Hill. Because we said bad things about her. At least that's what she feels. Yes. According to past quotes from her Instagram, which we've talked about her canceling her reunion tour in the States because they were saying mean things yes. about the fact that I don't show up on time. And Praz. Yes, wrote his song that we talked wrote about. Wrote his song, dissed Lauren Hill. Praz has come right out and said, they're paying their hard-earned money to see you. We're going on almost three decades of our existence individually and as a group to have people still interested in wanting to come see you. You have to be grateful. And you're not. <laughs> nope. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's fine. I'm not going to perform in the United States. But unless it's my old high school. Yeah. Well, what I think happened, how many does it say how many year reunion this is? Uh, it just says high school reunion. It doesn't say because I, I believe she was actually supposed to perform at her prom and she just now showed up. 
I was going to say, I think it's her 30th <laughs> reunion, but she was booked for her 20th. Yes. <laughs> she was supposed to perform at the prom. Yeah. Hello, Kristen. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, Kristen coming in big with a, with a little fire comment on, yeah, uh, she should. I she, like it. She has gotten too big for her britches as it were. <laughs> Yes. That's what Motley Crue said. (laughs) She showed up at Columbia High School in Maplewood, New Jersey, which last I knew was in the United States. It was. Uh, She performed hits from her solo catalog. And whenever I smell cheap cologne and raccoons, I know I'm in New Jersey. That's why. (laughs) Fans were quite upset about seeing this footage as they were calling her out for her performing at the wrong reunion. Mm. She showed up a year late and sang to the wrong reunion, said somebody, (laughs) (laughs) which was nicer than what I said. All right. And nicer than what Kristen said. Yes. So, uh, (laughs) yeah, Lauren Hill, who wait a minute. Were there white people at this reunion? I doubt it. Because remember. Yeah. She won't perform for white no, people. No. She She'd just, rather have her kids starve than, than have a white person buy, buy her record. Yes. So people aren't buying her stuff. So. All right, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Cranky Pants is on his way out. We want to say I bet uh, he's not leaving. once again. Huh? He's not leaving. He's just saying we got all of our things in that he yes. comes for. He still hasn't yes. heard his, his shout out at the end of the show. <laughs> yes, that's true. Um. Next article, Mo Money. Mm-hmm. And uh, the, the story that, that just keeps Mo on problems? giving. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> All hip hop comes to us this week. Dame Dash's Rockefeller steak. So far, the bidding is up to at least $3 million. Yeah. But you sent me the article after the show last week. And uh, I believe the Hendersons also sent me the same article after the show last week saying that uh, mm-hmm. it's on hold. Yes. So I found the most updated article I could for this week on the same thing. And so figured we'll roll with that. Yeah. The uh, the auction was scheduled for Tuesday, August 27th, or actually it was scheduled for Thursday, August 29th. Mm-hmm. And a judge put a delay on it on Tuesday. Right. He said, hold Dash, up. Dame Dash, of course, <laughs> owes money to multiple parties who asked for more time to conduct the auction. Auction. So uh, the judge extended the timeline to September 21st. Dash has lost a lawsuit to director Josh Weber. He mowed, owed more than $800,000 to Weber, to New York City, the New York State Department of Taxation and Finance, and photographer Monique Bunn. That's, That's a lot of people bun. with their handout. <laughs> So Weber, his lawyer, and the other parties agreed on the distribution of funds from Dash's Rockefeller stake on Monday, August 26th. They set a new minimum bid of $3 million. So you're not even going to sniff it unless you're coming in with $3 million. Right. They get bills to be paid off of this. This isn't just a punishment that he has to sell it. Right. It's being sold to pay other people that he is wrong. But you you know you're going to lose it anyway in how many years when... Jay Z takes yeah. it back. <laughs> like what we say, ten something like that. Yes, yeah, things like long. that. New York City will receive an estimated one hundred ninety three thousand eight hundred and seventy seven dollars and fifty seven cents. So that's a strange estimate. <laughs> that's a very particular estimate. Yes, it is. I don't. I don't think estimate means what you think it no. means. <laughs> New York State will then be paid one million seven hundred two thousand six hundred twenty six dollars and thirty four cents. For back taxes in second position. Mm. Weber and Muddy Water Pictures will have third position for approximately eight hundred and twenty three thousand in judgment plus thirty seven cents. (laughs) And Turvener Brown will receive approximately seventy thousand dollars. No, there's no umlauts. Okay. (laughs) Plus interest in the fourth position. So I assumed. (laughs) And Turvener Bunn will receive twelve thousand dollars plus interest in the fifth position and New York state will receive approximately $7 million for the total balance in back taxes owed by Damon dash in the sixth position. Pulling up the rear. So New York, New York state, state <laughs> is receiving a million dollars in second position. And then for another separate, 7 million for separate incidents. The last but, one is just as back, back taxes. Yeah, maybe they're different time periods. Maybe they're different ones for business, ones for personal. I don't know. 
Okay, maybe. And then Dash will collect the remaining funds from the auction after paying his back taxes with interest. Um, if it's only selling for three and he owes seven million for the total, and he ain't receiving <laughs> sure. No, we're starting at three. That math don't math. Yeah. <laughs> That's like a five and three. So uh Good luck, Dame. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's all I got to say on that. We, we do not have the uh, capacity to raise the funds to buy a stake in no. Rockefeller. <laughs> so we, no, we that is not what we one. did the fundraiser no, for. No. <laughs> we did that for something else. We did. Keefe D's bail payment rejected again. This is called all kinds of questions. <laughs> yeah. Because, you know, huh. we've, we've heard all of the... You know, Keith D did this. Uh, Piss Dookie paid him to do it. Uh, Suge uh-huh. paid him to do it. Uh, somebody else put him up to the job. He wasn't the shoot. We've heard them all. Yeah. But he's still in jail right now. So, And I was pronouncing it wrong the whole time. I found out it's Keefy, not Keith. Yes. It's Keefy D. <laughs> so Keefy D is still trying to get out on bail. As I, I would. just got home because I'm out on bail. What's the time? It's time to buy ale. Thank God Motley Crue didn't touch that uh, one. Not yet. No umlauts. No. <laughs> Wasn't that a Hanson song? Yes. Umlaut. <laughs> umlaut. No, I don't think so. Um, Clark District Court Judge Carly Kearney says she has more questions than answers after Dwayne Davis, known as Keefe D, attempted to provide additional financial records. Financial? Financial, financial. yes. I'm Let's sure there's an umlaut there somewhere. In there. That's what happens when you put an umlaut over an end. That's what it you becomes put on the bottom ends. of the end. Yes. <laughs> financial. Financial records regarding his attempt to pay off his $750,000 bail. I have a sense that things are trying to be covered up, she said. <laughs> Something smells fishy here. <laughs> and it's not New Jersey. It is not. <laughs> it has a completely different smell. I just love the fact that she says, I have a sense that something's trying, things are trying to be covered up. Like the fact that it took 30 years to figure out who killed Tupac. Yeah. I'm, I'm thinking things have been covered up for quite a while. <laughs> yes. Kearney said she received two identical letters. That means the from- same. From an entertainment company that supposedly supplied WAC 100 with the money. She noted that one of the signed names doesn't match anyone with ties to the company. Additionally, the second one had a misspelled name and a return address for a doctor's office. (laughs) Something smells fishy. (laughs) Those aren't red flags. (laughs) Oh, for everybody who's just kind of tuned in, let me give you a peek at the wheel. There's the wheel. All right, we're going to take the wheel away. So let's see where'd we leave off on this? No, that's basically that's how it, it ends. Yeah, She's like, yeah, th- there's something wrong on this. Um, yeah. Something smells fishy. She says, Wack was only trying to get out of it, in- trying to get an interview out of Keefe D. I don't really see where the actual 112 five came from with what's been provided. I also don't find the defense has met the burden to show that the bail is not connected to Mr. Davis, ultimately talking about Mr. Shakur's murder and any evidence to the contrary is not credible. Mm. (laughs) Keefe D has pleaded not guilty to first degree murder in the case. His trial will begin on March 17th. Be on the lookout for further updates on Keefe D and the trial for killing of Tupac through Mr. Throwback Thursday and multiple media outlets. Yes. <laughs> See multiple multiple media umlauts? Is that what you said? <laughs> yes, that's exactly what I said. Uh, Alaskan Superman. <laughs> yes, because that's... I saw a video Did of you? this, <laughs> and I was going to send it to you, but I said... This is just weird. I don't think this is newsworthy. I like it. (laughs) And then the video turned into five different news articles. Yeah, it did. Ludicrous. Or shall I say Luda? Yeah, not Luda. Chris Brown. Brown. (laughs) But we'll mention all that later. (laughs) We we will mention all the team names and whatnot when we get there. (laughs) Well, I I was told last night that's how I have to say it. Yes, I know. So. Apparently, Ludacris has a bucket list. What was on his bucket list was drinking. And this sounds like a commercial, doesn't it? It does. Fresh glacial water. (laughs) 
Sounds like something that Aquafina would put on their bottles to try to sell it. Not the actress. No, that's Aquafina. <laughs> yes. Now, I've been to Alaska um, just last year on a yes, cruise. Yes, I know. And I had a, um, what was the drink? I believe it was a margarita. But yes, because they called it a glacierita. Um, while you're on the boat going over to one of the biggest glaciers, they put you on a small boat and they take you out on the thing. Uh, one of the crew members takes a fishing net and puts it into the water and pulls up a big giant chunk of ice, which is mm-hmm. has broken off of the glacier and floated around and blah, blah, blah. Right. And then they crush it up and they put these big chunks into your cup and pour your drink over it so you can have fresh what, glacial what water. Has here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, I was so, in Alaska. If they baked it, I would have been burning. Yes. Like midnight oil. <laughs> that would be beds are burning. That would be, yes. <laughs> and that would be See, Australia. I know, I know other music. <laughs> that other would than be Australia, not Alaska. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> so the fact that he drank fresh glacial water mm-hmm. had some of his fans concerned about his health. <laughs> yes. He was in Alaska for a show because apparently... Hip hop is big in Alaska. Who knew? Well, we did uh, know Ludacris- because uh, Killer Priest, or, or is it Master Killer? Master Killer, I think, did did a lot of shit with the yeah. Alaskan um, the, the rappers. Locals, I remember yeah. talking about that. Yes, uh, while in Alaska for a show, Ludacris posted on his social media pages a video of him drinking water from a glacier. Half the Not world's glaciers are here in Alaska. I couldn't come here and just have a show. So once he screams the water, he goes, "Oh my god." He scurries away from the camera. He says, water's so good, it tastes like God made it. Um, Because he did. (laughs) That's what the second part of the caption. Yes. For those who have differing uh, beliefs, I'm just reading what the caption says. Just like when you say Nickelback, those are not your words. They are the words of the article. (laughs) Fans became worried after seeing the post with one Instagram user commenting, be careful with glacier water. Even though it looks fresh and clean, it's often full of bacteria, parasites, and viruses. Microorganisms you definitely don't want in your system. It can make you extremely sick. Make sure to boil it first to stay safe. Yes, I'm going to boil my glacier water while I'm out on the glacier, sticking my face up there, licking the water off it. (laughs) Glaciers by nature are cold. They are. (laughs) Most of the bacteria, parasites, and viruses can't survive in the cold. But if you heat them up. (laughs) Another fan commented on Instagram that Luda was about to turn into a kaiju, which is a term used to describe a giant monster featured in Japanese fantasy and science fiction movies and television programs. Yes, I guess Godzilla Mothra. Yes. I don't believe Mecha Godzilla counts. What What would Luda look like as a... Godzilla type monster. As, as a would, he be, <laughs> would he be more Godzilla? Would he be more Mothra? Would he be Gamera? Mm. The flying turtle? Yes. <laughs> I did, I used to love those movies, dude. Well, Mothra is a female, so I don't think he would go that route. But would he look like a Mothra? Mm. What was the one that started with an R? It was the bat thing. Oh, Man. I don't know. Alfredo's going to be mad at me because I don't remember that. Rodan. 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 Yes, Rodan. Yes. <laughs> um, trying to think of all the ones I remember from. And then there was. Monster Zero. Uh, there, was a, there was a three-headed one, too. I forget what that was. Was that Hydra? Well, that would be a Hydra, yes. Three-headed. And um, like every uh, MF Doom alter ego, King Ghidorah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, but I don't think he's going to do that. And many more fans shared their worries. Ludacris addressed the video in another post he shared on X. He said, for everybody asking me how that glacier water really tasted, when I tell y'all, and I'm a water snob, <laughs> it was the best tasting water I've ever had in my life. As I drank it, I felt like every cell in my human body was being hydrated and rejuvenated at the same fucking time. <laughs> You have got to stay hydrated. You we've have. been saying yes. we haven't been saying that for a while, but we've been saying it since the beginning yes. of the show. We said it for a very long time, and then we didn't say I, it. <laughs> well, you know, being that um, certain people are no longer mentioned on the end of the show, maybe mm-hmm. we should start mentioning some some uh, hydration maybe. products. I w- I will send out some 
feelers to see if we can get the okay to mention them. Yeah. Because I use some I use some hydration products. I have I have a big one out in my kitchen right now. I didn't bring it in. Uh Ludacris I told you also I said in the video. Else. I'm sorry. I told you I reached out to some, another company. Yes, you did. Mm. Ludacris also said in the video that he feels like Superman and explained that he shared the post to take his fans places and to show them things. I will take you places and I will show you things. That is a hell of a promise. <laughs> That's almost as good as it's dark and hell is hot. Almost. <laughs> That's his new album, I, I'm sure. Yes. <laughs> Take you places and show you things. <laughs> He's standing on the cover with an L on his chest. <laughs> <laughs> Luda Man. <laughs> uh, uh, Alaska.org, an Alaskan travel and vacation booking website, said the state is, quote, full of good drinking water, end quote. <laughs> yeah, there's the glaciers risk of, everywhere. <laughs> the risk, yeah, yeah you can. The 7-Elevens, mm. you know, the risk of contamination and sickness, although always possible, is often overstated. According to travel advisors, still, you should evaluate each water source and be prepared to treat or filter if necessary. The primary dangers of drinking water in Alaska are human and animal waste. Mm, human waste as, in your glacier water. <laughs> as well as bacteria Frozen such turds. as Giardia <laughs> and Cryptosporidium. I know that word. I don't know what it is. If you go with the Latin spores, meaning spores, mm -hmm. you know, the, the building blocks of bacteria and crypto is hidden. So hidden spore is the name of the bacteria. <laughs> and I think the thing uh, you mentioned before that there's a commercial for that. Giardia. Now. Yes. Giardia is a pretty bad, um, pretty bad bacteria. Isn't that what Jardians is for? No, you take you take once daily Jardians to lower your A1C. Um, to, the closer to the source you are, the more remote the area, the greater the chances of avoiding contamination, mm -hmm. according to Alaska.org. Ice cold and fast moving water is also usually safer. It came from a glacier. Glaciers are made of ice. They are. I would say it's ice cold. What's Safe. cooler than cool? <laughs> ice cold. Not to be confused with cool as ice. Never confuse anything with cool because as ice. Because that will make you sick to your stomach. It will. And It'll we've gone full <laughs> oval on that. <laughs> it will also make you drop that zero. Beware of heavy, but not your umlaut. Never no, drop your no, umlaut. No. Especially not in public. And that's <laughs> indecent. Said he's going to show you things, so... <laughs> And take you places. <laughs> Beware of heavy signs of animal life and traffic along the shore. Beaver dams upstream or nearby caribou herds as there is a higher probability of fecal contamination. Mm. The travel advisors suggest using iodine tablets and water filters as a way to prevent commonly found bacterium. Yeah, let's just drink iodine. That That's good. Yeah, but that's what they put in the... Um, in the kits for mm -hmm. making your water safer to drink. <laughs> if, if using iodine tablets, stirring them in some powder drink mix will help cover the taste. Additionally, water can be purified by boiling it for three minutes, according to the website. And then you got to wait for it to cool down before yes. you can drink it. Because don't drink boiling water. It's bad for you. <laughs> don't drink the milk. Why? It's, it's spoiled. spoiled. <laughs> New Blue Movie is our next. Yes. Boy. <laughs> if you thought listening to Andre 3000 play the flute on a record was fun. Yeah. Now you get to see it live on screen. But he's not. He's but not. He's not. He's not playing it. The music is no. playing. And he's like by somebody else. <laughs> he's like rolling around on the ground doing some weird performance art thing. <laughs> yes. It is so strange. <laughs> Why does your <laughs> breath smell like birdseed? Exactly. <laughs> Three stacks is nuts, man. He he's he's always been nuts. Yeah. But when he was putting out relatively good music, it was eccentric. Now it he's was. just nuts. <laughs> With an umlaut over the end. He's yes. nerds. He's nerds. <laughs> Hip Hop DX says Andre 3000 has released an intimate film to accompany his new Blue Sun album. Nearly a year after the album came out. Can you believe that shit's been out a year I almost? Know. The Outcast artist premiered Listening to the Sun, what he described as an intimate film 
on Thursday, August 29th. We already talked about intimate films. We did, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Coming in at 88 minutes long, Listening to the Sun, which will not be a fresh flicks, by the way. It will not. Spans the same length as New Blue Sun and finds three stacks peacefully meditating in a blue room, lighting candles, and zenning out. It the is whole very movie strange. is him <laughs> listening to his record, lighting candles, and doing some three stacks yoga. Yeah, it, it is so very strange to watch. It'll be in the show notes. <laughs> the ambient instrumental project, partly built around Andre 3000's flute playing, mm -hmm. has divided, surprisingly, has divided fans. What? <laughs> following its release last November due to its lack of rapping. Look, there's only one person I know who can actually speak while playing the flute, and that's Ian, Ian Anderson. Anderson. Yeah. <laughs> LL Cool J was among those disappointed by the project and shared his brutally honest thoughts earlier this year, as well as his thoughts on other things. He says, listen, he's amazing. His bars are all the way up. Not the flute, B. Not the flute. <laughs> yeah. Let's not lie to ourselves. I don't want to hear him do the flute. You want to hear me do a violin album? No. <laughs> I don't know. Can you play the violin? <laughs> <laughs> LL also urged three stacks to return to rap saying, I want to hear him get with big boy. That ain't going to happen. Mm. I want them to make an outcast album or for him to do a solo album. Every time he does a verse, it's enough material for an album. He's so gifted. So it's like, come on, B, not the flute. <laughs> flute to flute, Greg. Exactly. <laughs> that man needs to know the truth. He says. <laughs> Andre 3000 issued a measured and well-mannered response hmm. to LL's criticism. To me, I feel like if it's in, and this is very Zen and very well, blue course, room, rolling yes. on the floor, lighting <laughs> candles. To me, I feel like if it's in you, because I got homies my age and older than me that still rap. So if it's in you, you should rap until you die. You should perform until you die, he mm -hmm. said. Do but what I'm saying is... What it takes for me to do it, I'm always looking for the next. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to uphold the thing that I've done before. Of course, I have things to say now, but if I can't say them in a fresh, innovative way, if I feel like I'm just hanging on to the same flow that I used to do, it's not enough for me. And to that, I say, that's kind of cool, but, but there's also <laughs> something to be said for... If I buy a too short record, I know what I'm getting with a too short record. Exactly. If I buy an Andre 3000 record, I don't want to be like, okay, we're going to hear some outcast type stuff. What the fuck is this flute? Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's, it's a bit of a shakeup if you're not, not looking for it. <laughs> <laughs> the God and the Juggalos. Yes. Where is Ronnie Mexico when you need him? <laughs> Which is also sounds like the title of an upcoming album. <laughs> Why was Rakim performing at a gathering of the Juggalos Fest? Okay, to the best of my knowledge. Because these people are fucking weird. <laughs> they are. But they like to bring in a wide variety of acts and people who are, you know, more either very well known or very, very good at their craft to perform here. Uh, and also, based on my research, if you have not been there before, they throw things at the stage to see how you react. And if you can persevere through it, they all start chanting their weird family chant. And you are then part of the gathering. That's a fucking cult, dude. It is. But <laughs> that, is, that is their big thing. If you can withstand our stupidity... Uh, then you are now accepted by us and you don't have to go through this hazing or whatever ever again. I don't want to be accepted <laughs> by you. You don't know. You're fucking weird. Many of the people who perform there, that is their goal. Rakim is not one of those people and I'm quite sure that no one told him, okay, Rob, this is how this strange event goes. <laughs> Let, let's, let's just put this in perspective. You're going to book somebody for an event Mm -hmm. And not tell him that the entire ah. crowd is going to be a bunch of middle-aged neckbeards in fucking clown makeup that, chanting family. That is family. His promote. That is his. 
person's problem for not relaying to him. Because no, I'm sure. No, 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 no. If, That's if a somebody, fucking cult. If somebody got a hold of me and said, hey, we want you guys to come out here and perform at the Gathering of the Juggalos, I would say, okay. And then I would go, Bill, we're going to do this crazy fucking event with these weirdos, but we're getting paid for it. That is how it goes. Rakim did not answer the call and say, yeah, I'm down. I'm going to go do that. That's not how it happened. <laughs> they called his manager, his publicist, his somebody, or the other way around, somebody else reached out to the to the gathering and said, hey, we want our guy to perform there. And then they didn't inform their guy. That's where the breakdown is. So as much as I am not part of the cult, I don't see it as their problem that this happened because this is what they do. This is who they are. People know this. You didn't inform your talent, your artist, what he was getting into. You this don't, you don't accept this job without knowing that as, as a manager or whatever. You don't take this booking without knowing what you're getting into. You, you do if you don't care about all that shit and are just looking at dollar signs. Right. So it's your fault for not telling your artist. Your artist. Right. Um, That's what I'm saying. So, That's where the breakdown is. It's not because juggalos are assholes because juggalos are juggalos. They're going to do what they're going to do. Oh, no, juggalos are assholes. Well, that's an opinion. I have no opinion on them. I just stay away from them. Uh, they are different than me. But th- I know how they are. I don't block my are. opinion. Juggalos are assholes. My, my nephew got into that whole thing for a little bit. Yeah. No, I know how and they a- are, and I would never put myself in a position to be around a group of them. Mm-hmm. So. Look, when your biggest fucking hit as a rap group is a remake of a Sly Fox one and done. Yeah. And Eminem made him more famous than anything else. <laughs> and yeah. And, and and they wrestled for a bit. Yep. What is it? Is Shaggy. What Shaggy is it? Too Dope. Shaggy Too Dope and Violent J. Yes. Man, we need Alfredo because- for this. <laughs> because and what is he a juggalo? No, but he is an aficionado of the culture. He is not one, but he he is well versed in their activities and their mannerisms. So he would be a juggalo expert. Witness. I mean, <laughs> dude, I've read Anton Zandor LeVay. Mm-hmm. That doesn't make me an expert on no that whole thing. No. Alfredo has not been a part of the Juggalo movement, but he has observed them. Oh, so he studied them almost like the Bushmen of the Kalahari. Yes. Like he was studying some kind of alternative life. Yes. So he is an expert in the field without being part of the field. (laughs) (laughs) That's not something you put on a resume. Eh. I'm a Juggalo expert. (laughs) Unless. Well, well, then you are not hired because we need somebody who doesn't waste their time. Yes. Unless he is family. Then, you know. <laughs> anyway, so, what happened to Rakim? So, <laughs> Rakim, who is normally very calm yes. on and off the mic, almost to the point of it being kind of a distraction because yeah. nothing rattles him. When he got a bit mic. riled up after he had bottles tossed at him during mm-hmm. a performance at the 24th <laughs> gathering of the Juggalos in the bustling town of of Thornton, Ohio. Yeah. During his set, Rock Kim chided a segment of attendees in the crowd for throwing bottles toward the stage, going so far as to pause his performance to address the culprits. Yes. Chill with the motherfucking bottles, man. He said. Yeah, he basically in said. A show a goodwill. We're up here to have a good time. He turned his attention to everybody else and said, for everybody that came to have a good time, make some noise and got a very. Yeah, it was very, pretty quiet. Timid response. Yeah. Rakim continued, hinting that he'd be forced to end his performance prematurely if any other objects were hurled in his direction moving forward. Because, you know, I'm not trying to get hit with no fucking bottle, man. I right. love you all, but I don't want to walk off stage while we having a good time. You know what I mean? Look, if I'm him and I walk out on stage and I see nothing but neck beards, even the women, mm-hmm. with clown makeup on, 
That's a S, a K, and a J all together. I fucking return that check, and I say, I'm noping the fuck out. Yeah, but he's a professional. He's out there. He says, I got a job to do. I'm going to go out and do my job. But, you know, you can't hinder my ability to do my job while I'm trying to do my job. That's essentially what it breaks down to on the lowest level. I have a job to do, and you are putting hazards in the way of allowing me to do my job properly. Could you please stop doing that? <laughs> so then he launched into it's been a long time. Mm -hmm. In, in a performance that was billed as a ceremonial set by the festival's organizers who dubbed him a myth and a legend. He's a myth. Yeah, I think it's an improper use of the word, but they're on the on the right path by following it with legend. A press release announcing his festival said juggalos let us bow our heads one time before nodding them in honor of one of the greatest to ever grace a microphone. We're talking about the godfather of flow himself, the one and only Rakim, a more than worthy addition to any stage. Rakim is as much an ecosystem in the art of rhyming as he is an influence. Sure. So From that's crafting one half of the all-time classic paid in, in full, full with Eric B to etching an undeniable legacy in East Coast hip-hop and music in general, this pioneer cemented the legitimacy of from pen to page to booth to stage styles the same way Michelangelo carved figures in stone. That's how deep ingrained this man is in the art and culture of it. So, yeah, so it's and a nothing says reverence more than throwing fucking <laughs> bottles at him. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Some people's kids, man. I don't know. <laughs> and now, if it couldn't have gotten any better, <laughs> let's get a little worse. <laughs> new school news. <clears throat> Hot new hip hop brings us Big Sean clowns Drake by recreating the rapper's selfie duck face. And that's enough of that shit. <laughs> I would still rather listen to Drake than a fucking. But would you ICP. rather would you rather duplicate his duck face <laughs> than put fucking clown makeup on 100 times that's, out of 100 that's a toss up for me there <laughs> fuck the juggalos I said what I said we're going to take our first break <laughs> of the day and when we come back we're going to have some woo news because every member of the Wu-Tang Clan including you God could beat the fucking piss out of every juggalo on the face of the earth. We are going to come right back with Mr. Throwback Thursday, episode 553. This is Raheem from the Furious Five, and you're listening to my boys, Jamie and Bill, on Mr. Throwback Thursday. One, two, one, two. What's good, yo? This is Ghostface straight from Staten Island, New York. And right about now, it's time for Woo News with Jamie and Bill. Y'all know what it is. Get it correct. Mr. Throwback Thursdays, Jamie and Bill. You know what I mean? On Woo News. That's what's going down right now. Y'all check this out. Exclusive. Peace. The RZA. The Jizza. Raekwon. Master Killer. Inspector Deck, you got Method Man, Ghostface Killer, an old dirty bastard. It's now time for Woo News with Mr. Throwback Thursday. Jimmy, Jimmy, y'all. Welcome back, Mr. Throwback Thursday, episode 553. It is time for Woo or were, because yes. I'm going to put a new lot over the U. <laughs> Werner's. Um, first article of Werner's is Gervert Erp. We are umlauting every vowel today. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Give it up. And I sent you this, I believe, as well as other people. But um, CNBC is where we're going with this. Yes, because nobody watches CNBC. It's like C-SPAN. So I figured mm -hmm. we should at least l take their reporting and bring it to the masses. <laughs> and uh, as such, apparently I am blurry again. My camera's been acting up today. Is that or I just haven't had enough coffee to unblur myself? Yes. You know what? I mean, you're not vibrating at a high enough velocity. <laughs> oh, my Michael J. Fox. Yes. <laughs> <What> the <fuck? laughs> there we go. That's better. Um, Until it's not. A judge, and, and just now, <laughs> a judge has ordered shit dick. 
Pharma Bro mm -hmm. to surrender all made copies yeah. all of the, discs the rare, he burned. <laughs> yes, all the copies he burned of the rare Silver Rings album that they have pawned off as a Wurtang album. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, New York federal judge on Monday ordered notorious Pharma Bro Martin Shitdick to surrender any copy he retains of the rare Silver Rings album Once Upon a Time in Shaolin, which has been labeled as a Wu-Tang Clan album, which he previously forfeited to the U.S. government after being convicted of securities fraud seven fucking years ago. That's that's the insane part, because, you know, we reported on this guy when it ha when he was fighting with Ghostface. <sighs> It's mm -hmm. when it started, when he was talking shit about Ghostface and he had his mm -hmm. guys in masks and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And, and that was seven years ago. <laughs> the order came in response to a lawsuit by the one of a kind album's owner, Pleaser DAO, which accused him of retaining digital copies of the hip hop rarity and playing it online for listeners in violation of the forfeiture order. Pleaser DAO is based out of the Cayman Islands and had paid $4.75 million <laughs> for Once Upon a Time in Shaolin in two separate transactions in 21 and 24. Brooklyn Federal Court Judge Pamela Chen last month barred shit dick who was released from prison two years ago from streaming or disseminating the album. You cannot disseminate. Anybody no. who's ever watched the NFL knows that any recording or dissemination of said <laughs> without the express written consent of the yes. national football league <laughs> is prohibited. Yeah. Uh, Chen on Friday held a hearing on a preliminary injunction request by pleaser DAO in a written order. She wrote that the company had raised quote, sufficiently serious questions going to the merits of the claims against shit dick for violating the defend trade secrets act, a misappropriation of trade secrets and unjust enrichment. Yeah. Salute Shane order, Bond. What's up? DJ Shane Bond in the house. The order bars shit dick from possessing the album or its contents and that by Friday he turn over any copies of it that he now has. Yes, that was by two days ago, Friday, right? Yes. Chen also ordered him by September 30th to file an inventory and account signed by shit dick deca detailing the nature and volume of the copies of the album's data and files that defendant retained the names and contact information of the individuals to whom he distributed the data and files. So if he played it over the Internet, he's got to listen. He's got to, according to this list, everybody who heard who it, who heard it. Yeah. So why doesn't he just under number two? Fucking everybody. Yeah. Yeah. The date and method of such distribution. Number three, Tuesday on my computer. <laughs> That's and what I, amounts, I remember when he did it. He was he was doing some weird live. I think he was on Twitter at the mm -hmm. time. He was doing a weird live on Twitter. Who knows? It could yeah. be Periscope at the time. I don't know. But he was there and he's like, oh, I might play it. Um, oh, can you hear it? It's in the background. It's 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 playing right now. Can't you hear it? And I got so tired of staring at that dude and wanting to punch his face that I just turned it off. But that's okay. I have a one minute sampler, mm -hmm. which we own. Yep, legally. It's on the blockchain. <laughs> so anyway, this order remains in effect pending the outcome of Pleaser Dao's lawsuit. Shit, Dick's lawyer Edric Edward. Paltzik. So you've got shit dick being <laughs> represented by Paltzik. <laughs> In a statement to CNBC said the order is merely a preliminary measure entered by the court to maintain the perceived status quo before any discovery occurs. The order has no bearing whatsoever on the final outcome of the case. Well, it kind of does. Mm -hmm. Crucially, the court did not find that Pleaser DAO is likely to succeed on the merits or that the DAO's allegations are true and instead ruled that Mr. Shitdick's forthcoming motion to dismiss should proceed without delay. That's not what she said. No. <laughs> The Reed Smith lawyer named Stephen Cooper, who represents Pleaser DAO in its suit, basically said in a statement that the ruling is an important victory for the company without saying this guy's full of shit. We are pleased that Judge Chen recognized that immediate relief was necessary to thwart the continuing bad acts of Mr. Shit Dick. Everything he does is a bad act. Uh, yeah. So he's not a nice guy. <laughs> shit Dick doing shit dick things. Mm -hmm. Toast face cake up. 
Now we talked about Killer Coffee. We did a while ago. I have some Killer Coffee here. And now, if you are of a uh, pod brewing system, mm-hmm. copyright uh, protected. Yes. And not a sponsor of the show no. in the immortal words of Daniel, not yep, a sponsor. Not a sponsor. <laughs> um, legendary MC, lyrical genius, a true visionary of verse. Toast face gorilla. <laughs> you may have heard us a mention while, it. <laughs> a while ago, introduced Killa Coffee to the world. And yes. today he announced a new partnership with the brand that revolutionized the pod brewing mm-hmm. uh, company or pod brewing way Method, of brewing yep. coffee that begins with a K mm-hmm. um, like kill a coffee yeah, as, <laughs> as does kill a coffee to launch two of the brand's most popular varieties, Supreme dark roast and Shaolin cannoli <laughs> to the K cup pod format for the first time. That would be my rap name. If I were to start today, Shaolin what? cannoli. <laughs> That'd be funny. <laughs> I, I I'm surprised it wouldn't have anything to do with coffee. Uh, founded in 2021, the black owned Killer Coffee is crafted using 100% Arabica beans, tailored to suit the like taste it. of everyday coffee enthusiasts. To those seeking a flavorful treat, starting today, fans can enjoy a mug of the popular Shaolin Cannoli Medium Roast. Which apparently will taste like Jamie yes. uh, or a bold <laughs> supreme dark roast brewed to perfection right at home. I'm going to have to look for this shit now. Killa Coffee features six proprietary blends, including mm. Marvelous Medium Roast. It should be Marvelous Marv's Medium Roast. Yes. <laughs> not Mick Mars. Actually, it's not Marvelous Marv. It's just Cash Money and Marvelous. That's we, right. We, we, always we went Marv. down that. He always yeah, says, we, it's Marvelous and Cash Money, Marv and Jerome. That's why we always put them together. Yes. So I was going to say, that's that Mandela effect. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so Marvelous, Medium Roast, Marble Cake, mm-hmm. which sounds like it would be a Toast Face Gorilla album. Yes. Um, vanilla Milkshake. I hear that Supreme, brings all the boys to the yard. Most of them anyway. Yeah. Supreme Dark Roast, Shaolin Cannoli, and chocolate chip mint, because I want coffee that tastes like ice cream. <laughs> well, you do like ice cream. <laughs> I, I love it. Well, yeah, but I can't eat it as much anymore. Comes in 12-ounce bags, and it's available on killacoffee.com. Supreme Dark Roast and Shaolin Cannoli Cup Pods are now available in 10-count boxes uh, on sh- the website of Not a Sponsor. I'm looking at the website now, and there's 10, 20, 60, and 80 count. Really? Yeah. What do they want for an 80 count? An 80 count of Shaolin Cannoli. A one-time purchase is $62.97. So it's less than a dollar a cup. That's actually not bad. If you have it on auto delivery, it is $58.77. So you can get a bag of the coffee Mm -hmm. for $13.49. Whether in bag form or the ultra convenient cup pod for format, Killa Coffee embodies the smooth flamboyant style that only can be delivered by the toast face gorilla. <laughs> yeah, I will do this because I am a nice guy and I want to support toast face. Our last little bit, not a sponsor, but if you want nope, to see it, come yeah. to the chat. You want to support um, toast face? Go ahead. You God. Still sucks. But ODB? He's, not a, he's not a jurgler. Still dead. No, still better than a jurgler. <laughs> I'd like to hit every juggalo in the juggalo vein. <laughs> Fuck them people. Um, it's time for some music. Let's get yes. let's get into what makes me happy on this show and stop talking about fucking juggalos. <laughs> Oh, great. Record of the week is the incident. Cl- no, it's not. <laughs> you would not do that. To I me. would not do that. No, they're artists of the month. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, but the artist of the month made me laugh like nobody's business. And that's kind of why it I sounds did like it. an intimate film. And we'll it, get it to does. that in a little bit. <laughs> yep. Oh, my God. No oh, my those. God. <laughs> the one and done. Yes. Came to us in 1993. A number. It runs. Does it say how long? I it got runs? an hour and 14. 
But yeah, I think I yeah. have extra tracks on here that you don't. Three, I have four, remixes. five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 30, 40, 15, 16, 17. I have 18. Yeah. I have a bunch of bonus tracks after that that are remixes. So 18 is what we go with. <laughs> okay. It is a true one and done because I see nothing else from this group. <laughs> but this is the a name deluxe of the edition. Re- <laughs> the name of the record. Copyright not protected, by the way. No. Contemporary Jeep music. Do you listen to that in the Valley of the Jeep Beats? Well, you have to. (laughs) And it is by Da King and I. Yes, it is. Da King and I. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Track number one is the title track. It is. It's not listed as an intro. It's only a minute and 15. Right. So I can't call it an intro. John's going to say it sucks when he finds out. <laughs> Whenever it's he called, finally leaves B-dubs and. <laughs> and his waitress stops giving away his cue. Contemporary Jeep music. Contemporary Jeep music. Contemporary. 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 That's what I just said. Yes. Contemporary Jeep. Contemporary Jeep music. Contemporary. With a standard drum beat. Yes. Contemporary Jeep what does it all mean? Could it mean listening to hard tracks by a string? Yes, I believe you see contemporary genius. Tell me what you feel as the rhymes beats your I'm not going to lie. That had me bobbing my head. I love oh, that good. beat. Good. <laughs> I thought you not track all number of two. our one and done are just garbage. I mean, <laughs> track number two. Maybe this is a ludicrous thing because he's going to take you places and show you things. He is. <laughs> this is called Let's Take a Trip. That's got very much a leaders of the new school Mm -hmm. kind of feel to it there. Mm -hmm. Track number three, flip da script. No T on that. Well, no, because then it wouldn't technically rhyme. Uh (laughs) Coming straight from the ghetto, ghetto. kicking some newness. newness. King and I, setting setting it off. My man man Face, majesty, is a, you know what? You know what? <laughs> Catch a bar. How smooth can I get? As smooth as a jazz sax. What a class act. Now you see why I miss the all that. Pull the rhymes from the back of my dome. The texture of the lecture is then transformed into a poem. Yeah. Your rhymes are so boring, I'm snoring. Leave me so sleepy, so the more I couldn't know this morning. Here comes the Negro, one night of the two amigos that make the music even look Okay, Shaolin Cannoli, I got my new rap name. <laughs> It's coming off of interlude one, MC asshole. <laughs> Is that anything like Billy Booty Hole Brown? It, it can be. Just let it keep rolling. We'll just edit it. Yeah. Hey, what's up, man? What can I do for you? Hey, yo. <laughs> hey, what's up, man? <laughs> hey, what's up, man? What can I do for you? Hey, yo, you know what I'm saying? My name is MC. I ain't shit. You know what I'm saying? Just sign with my new record company, Asshole Records. You know what I'm saying? Asshole Records. <laughs> That's very much <laughs> fucked up. <laughs> Don't know where my ride is, man. <laughs> Track number five, Crack Da Weasel. <laughs> I was just cooling at a rock and jam doing the bubble. My people go so that out comes the portable. Tell me over Sally. Hello, would you tell me what's the problem? Because I'm dancing with the girl belly to belly. It was beast. They said I've been the victim of a thief There's no 40 books around and 30 crates of beats from the soap shack Time to leave the party I was at Gotta get my property and ain't nobody stopping me I'm hating as I make my way to the sack Take it up all types of ways to get my shit back Shame, this is uh, 93 Track number 6 Interlude 2 Amusement Park Bring your nice little kitty Shit, 
she was a floozy. Can't be a floozy, man. I, I would rather be a skeezer than a floozy. Yes. Or would you Track rather be number a Rudy seven. <laughs> <laughs> Track number seven. Brain to you. Look in the sky, it's a bird, it's a plane, and with Superman with a very different name, the brain. As I swim through the sky, who's that guy? Well, it's yeah. the unlikable brain surgeon, pulling out my bag of utensils, some pencils, to operate on your mind, let me unwind, relax a bit, cause I'ma meditate on one mind. Track number eight. Wasn't this a Wu-Tang track? Yes, but I believe it <laughs> there's <Tears. has> a Z. <laughs> huh? I believe theirs has a Z. Yeah. Yes. It's also a rush track off the 2112 album. Noted. On September morning, life didn't seem the same way it should be. I was just morning, thinking of all the wrong that was done to me. Check me. Sitting on my doorstep, thinking with my head down, alone in my own world with no one left around. Then out of nowhere comes my partner, Majesty, asking me, yo, is, why do you look like this man? Tragedy. Remember the girl from down the block that I was checking out? Tragedy. Tragedy. Gaddafi. Indeed. Uh, <laughs> track number nine Soul Shack Interlude. So, 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 so. Yeah, that's about all it is. Yeah. Uh, track number 10 Ghetto Instinct. I came in the door, said it before. Niggas hit the floor. I never had Bible store, store, bottle store on that no more. <laughs> little bit down the road, I forgot I had to roll to home base where I could represent with my ill squad. G, smiling, trying to find a squad. Looking at my Gucci, it's about that time. For me and my niggas to commit some crime. I need the dope. Pesos, the name of snaps, got gats, more gats, max. Looking at my Gucci, it's about that time. <laughs> Track number, what are we up to? 11. 11? Mr. All That. That would be it. Track number 12, Interlude, Jazz Skit. Yeah, we'll roll right into the next one. That one's 20 seconds. So Interlude 3, I should say. And then it goes, this is how we do. It's a whole lot of interludes on this shit. There are. A few years ago, they would have been back spin interludes. Track number 14, interlude four, Izzy sings da blues. Your life's 
<laughs> Track number 16, represent. No, let's see. Oh, no. did it? we had to do? We, lost, got, we have to do Lost My Mind. Yeah, actual Lost My Mind. Because the interlude kept saying Lost My Mind. <laughs> right. So track number 15 is Lost My Mind. <laughs> singing the blues and it should be more of a jersey. <laughs> Coming home from a jazz club late at night. Who's at my crib? Why's my lights on? Who's in the crib? Who's acting a fool? Whoever it is must be back in the zoo because I ain't having it. I called up Mads to get the ooh-wah. I had these suckers dancing to my doo-wah. As soon as I get to my place of rest, mess around and won't be... It's not like he lost his mind. It kind of did. So now we're going to go to represent track number 16. Represent, represent. My host, track. Susanna. Oh, Hong Kong. <laughs> <laughs> track number seven is the same as track number five, but it's spelled differently. Track <laughs> the weasel, but it's subtitled that other shit. Yes, it is. Track number 18, no sign of Shaquille O'Neal anywhere. No. What's up, Doc? No Shaq knives. <laughs> One thing I can say, and this is not a negative in any way because I dig this album. Mm-hmm. Um, this sounds very 1993. It does. I mean, I it can, does. I can pick like six different groups that they kind of have the same feel as, and that's not a negative thing. No, I wouldn't say it's a negative thing either. But uh, yeah, it's uh, it's very. Very date appropriate com- comparing the sound. Yes, not terrible. It is 1993. <laughs> it is a generic mm-hmm. 1993, an amalgam of 93. Yes. <laughs> it is definitely a record that happened. Yes. And well, like, I said, but it, like you said, not it's bad. not terrible. It's no. not bad. It's there's just, no singles off of it. There's and there's no singles? charting action. Oh, I on you said it. there were two singles. I'm like, what? Really? <laughs> no, there's no singles off okay, of it. Okay, that is more, more to what I was thinking. <laughs> and there is no charting action, but. It was worth the the snippets we listened yeah. to. It's it's worth giving the full record at least to listen through. And that is your one and done. Da King and I contemporary Jeep music. Yes. Although I traded in my Jeep, so I don't know if I can really listen to it. Yes, it is not in the Valley of the Jeep Beats. No. It is time for our record of the week. It is. Uh, our record <laughs> of the week comes to us from, from our new artist of the month. Yes. Who are still active. They are. They are a Canadian hip hop group from Vancouver, British Columbia. Consisting mainly of Vancouver, (laughs) Vancouver, if we (laughs) can lot them all. Mad Child and Prevail. Frequent collaborators include a vocalist named Mocha Only, who was a member of the group for a short period of time and then kind of dissipated from the group and made... (laughs) 
as well as other former members, Easy Rock and Zodak, who were only in the few in the group for a few years. And their producer is Rob the Viking, because <laughs> why wouldn't it be? <laughs> Instead of Bob this, Rock. <laughs> the name of this group. Yes. Your artist of the month for Which I September. Which I hope is new to you. Oh, it was. <laughs> The name of this group, your artist of the month for September of 2024, Swollen Members. <laughs> and everyone is surprised that it's new to you because, you know. I like Three Hard Dicks a lot. <laughs> you would think <laughs> that they would be on your radar. <laughs> I fucking hate you sometimes. <laughs> Your record of the week comes to you from your artist of the month. Yes. This is the debut album by Swollen Members, <laughs> released May 31st, 1999. Swirlin Murmbers. Swirlin Murmbers, yes. <laughs> um, the name of this. Uh, let's go through the producers quick. Sure. Mad Child, Cool DJ EQ, The Alchemist, Paul Nice, Zodak, Evidence, DJ Chemo, Joey Chavez, and Dell the Funky Homo Sapien. Yeah, I'm telling you. Okay. So, Tank Dell the Funky Homo Sapien. <laughs> yes. Uh, so let me mention real quick uh, Paul Nice. Um, Paul Nice is a name that people may not know. Uh, Isn't the, he local to me? He was. He's Poughkeepsie DJ. Poughkeepsie. That's what I thought. Um, I don't know is where Paul Nice is still alive. Uh, there was a big uh, okay, so I got a whole bunch of stuff from a Paul Nice um, storage unit. Yes, uh, some stuff I still have here. So a lot of stuff I donated to the museum. Um, and like an entire box, I mean, like giant box full of his uh, three and a half inch floppies that he used to make music. So it is really cool that we get to mention Paul Nice with a personal connection, you know, twice removed or whatever you want to call it, mm -hmm. uh, on the show. That's I believe all. he's still alive. Is he? From I what I'm he, looking, although he was, although Reddit, there's a Reddit thing that said Paul Nice has died. Yeah, he like at, disappeared at 56. He did a remix of Hey Ladies. Mm -hmm. So. I, don't know, I know it's strange. He, I don't want to say he was missing. Um, he was not reachable. About five months ago, he passed away, according to this. That's, sounds accurate. And says PK is heartbroken. Poughkeepsie is heartbroken. Yeah. So, wow. Yeah. So th there you have it. So Paul Nice. Yes. Uh, Poughkeepsie, New York's Paul Nice. Indeed. He is not related to Pete or Greg. Not that I'm aware. <laughs> uh, let's see. They, so let's get to the, the record. It's called Balance. It's the debut album by Swollen Members. <laughs> um, it has sold a whopping 41,000 copies since its release. <laughs> I have 18 tracks on this thing. As do I. Track number one. Groundbreaking. You're breaking ground with your swollen member. <laughs> That's some Hulk shit. <laughs> what nature divides, the spirit unites. And dreams are made of this. Swollen members are much too dangerous. <laughs> we busted out from underneath. Swollen members are competition. My, 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 my advice is refrain. Swollen members are much too dangerous. <laughs> Track number two, Strength. Mm -hmm. 
primitive dissension from high is an intense description of why the Valkyrie fly. Calculate the circumference of the sky for future reference. Measure it all from bird's eye to add some fuel to my furnace. To those who scratch the surface and lay signs to apply the respect of the stone trajectory of David Slinton. Track number three, Lady Venom. Venom. <laughs> Track number four, Front Street. Yeah, that math don't math either. Shane. <laughs> The induction of Paris Green leaves what you see with those seams Or so it seems, and as it stands, it seems that I never land I sight by laser beam, float inches above the sand Birds pray, exit larger than point of entry Son to father, colossal, no mathematical gentry They sent me without weaponry, forced to forge my own Infiltrate Fortune 5, watch them clone the run, I've been blown This record isn't bad. I know. <laughs> I was going to say something different, but I figured it would end up in the board. In in the board. <laughs> so I'm not going to. Probably a good call. Track number five, Bless and Destroy. Although I feel like I'm denying you the opportunity <laughs> to be creative. So would, would you like me to do it after this song? Sure. <laughs> Sickening. First the awakening, prepare for the quickening Battle so controller, there can only be one Drink a can of Pepsi Cola while I'm walking on the sun I'm ill, equipped with interchangeable weaponry Three mystical blades and multiple personalities oh. Shane Bonds is better than the King and I Well, they have this massive list of producers <laughs> Yeah The King and I had two people The King Yes And I And I <laughs> <laughs> No tragedy Gaddafi No Unless the so eyes stood for intelligent hoodlum. <laughs> are you ready for the sound bite that's going to end up in the board? <laughs> I'm really enjoying swollen members. <laughs> <laughs> there you have it. I just feed your beast, man. You I, do. <laughs> I, I, it just wouldn't make any sense to not put that in. So you no, had some. No, it, I, I've got a whole like two more banks that are empty. So <laughs> yeah, I, I know. <laughs> Track number six featuring. Raka ear, ear science, ear science, sure, and evidence Iris is science? called I don't know. Counterparts, which was also a Rush album. <laughs> there's parts, <laughs> and then there's counterparts. Yeah. Yo, hit the switch in December. I'll be on to November. Bombing, disturbing the calm and civic centers. Make a smoothie out of rapper and his ice in my blender. Be on the fender bender, dilated, swollen members, independent money making. No time for waiting. Rock a stimulating, design for penetrating. Nothing to prove, fancy and see in land mover. Track number seven Circuit Breaker. <laughs> I'm posted in the brightest colors available. A bright neon sign that says all of these available. My sheer face is unscalable. Take heed to the contour shape of the dagger in my cape. 451, right hand circle and dragon weight. I'd be obliged to take position as the leader of the mission to expose the fault and hand play of those decomposed magicians. This been objective the way that I'm. Hey, three and Tra a half. Three and a half, Shane. <laughs> <laughs> Three and a half at half inch makes a difference. Because <laughs> when it doesn't reach, it can spray. That's right. Track number eight, Out of Range. 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 Out of Range.
Track number nine, featuring Divine Styler. You may have heard of Divine Styler. Wow, there's a name out of the <laughs> if you're past. You're down with the syndicate posse. As well as Everlast mm. and Evidence. Ones, fives, tens, and twenties. <laughs> Hundred G's and I'm pulling honeys. <laughs> Divine Styler. That's a name I hadn't heard in years. Bottle Rocket is the name of the song. Yo. The rhyme excursions touch minds like brain surgeons. Feel the lyric tear gas, even on clean versions. No profanic, goddammit. Hard like granite to the utmost. I'm butter on rye, always high, but play the low post. I stretch to go the distance. Yo, my lungs are mad elastic. I'm dope on plastic like flex and always keep it classic. Expressions in the facial. I want Rachel from Caribbean rhythms. I hit them with a bat. Yeah, there were a lot of guys from that rhyme syndicate that we really, really liked, but they never got outside of what you want to do. Party <laughs> like Bronx style Bob <laughs> and Nat the Cat, Nat the Cat, <laughs> Shaquille Shabazz. <laughs> Great names, too. Yes, I Track love Shaquille 10, Shabazz. <laughs> Assault and Battery because he was gold girl, who's cold cash. <laughs> One of my Shaquille, Shaquille Shabazz. Shabazz, Supreme the Lord G O D down with the city kit posse. <laughs> The rhyme syndicate yeah. one you did. Skulls are shattering, this is assault and battery. 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 Blood rushing excitement, eternity of darkness. Trust me, you don't want to start this, I'm heartless. Cobra that hits this is some... Yeah, Donald D, the syndicate sniper. He, he actually had a couple had of his records. Yeah. Track number 11 featuring Big New, Safir, and Third Rail Vic. No, we've done Safir as a one and done, I think. We did. Valentine's Day Massacre. Savagely attack this last wave. Accurate aim. Savagely attack this last wave. Schizophrenic, borderline psychotic, sensational, recreational narcotics. I thought I lost it, but I found it. Temptation marches along till I'm surrounded, inspired by fire. I like track that. number 12. This is how I like it served. SM on the rocks. Oh, that's going on the board, too. <laughs> Walk the world over with the aid of air cargo composed in 24 channels, circuit panels. And yeah, so she wishes we could play the clips longer. We do, too. We're already getting in trouble and muted in countries because we're playing this much, even though we are protected under the Digital Millennium Copyright Act for what we do. Um, but you can always go to the show notes and click on the link and you can hear the entire albums. Yes. Track number 13 featuring Sun Doobie. Yes. Committed. Speak your mind. 
Fucking look at look at fucking Mad China's Gerber baby fucking haircut. Chicky chicky eyes, we puff for stuff daily. Hey, hooray, bless the trade. Hey, Lord save me. Take one for you, two for me, son, pay me. 89, 7, 7, and let out the crazy. Can't fake, you'll be 130 in the AM. The street vigilante, real do what I age. In this war statement, son, look how we came in. The mental patient will make you move on the pavement. Painters go, my cause so ill. Famous, nameless, remind me how son do be. Track Remember number Eminem 14? told you he saw a porno once with Sundubian. Mm-hmm. No, but I saw a porno with Sundubian in it. See? <laughs> From Funk Dubiest, by the way. Yes. Uh, track number 14 featuring Unicron and Del the, the Funky Homo Sapien. It's called Left Field. Del said all we can see is about to get eight right now. It's pink. Del, murderous whirlwind of wit, get the word smith, break it down bit by bit, hit a nerve, my graphics cause seizures, you slur, and your memory blurs, a sure bet, Del, it never fails, never tells a perilous quest, with the terrorist, send an MC to the therapist, my microphone will be a family heirloom, doom awaits, I'll rate rappers, nominate rappers, till it scares straight out, the, I clap a track with exactly flows that attract. Track number 15, Horrified Nights. Mm. Mr. Mumon, give me the four finger count. Just beats a little sick. Hey, yo, I'm coming yeah. with aggression. No question, I'm steadily progressing. I'm rhyming with time and money invested. I've been stressing since I was an adolescent. Now shit's so dope, I could get charged with possession. Profession. That's that alchemist beat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Track number 16, Battle Axe Experiment featuring Evidence. Say alchemist, that's uh, one half of the hooligans. Uh, you don't sound human anymore. It's time to kill. Rough terrain, insane in my domain. Sadomasochism, wax whips and chains. There's no stopping us, soon to be popular. Dive deep, snorkeling, shark fins, circling. You can't step to the fearsome, ferocious beast. Track number 17 featuring AC alone consumption. Hmm. Accepted eclectics. Dukes and my horizons pass the time of day with me. Dukes and my horizons pass the time of day with me. Dukes and my horizons pass the time of day with me. The earth. He said Maharaji passes the day with him. <laughs> I'm throwing pickles on when the he's rug. Not throwing pickles on the rug. <laughs> track number eighteen, last track on the record, "Sinful Bliss." Or when he's on the deaf side dancing like a freak. <laughs> Is this that Paul Nice beat. There mm. <laughs> <laughs> The depth of the mind state of a sick man. Blood must slow suction like quicksand. Sharp and guillotine that cuts clean. You, you can't hang an iron plate in my head. Strike with rattlesnake fangs. I'm ill, especially when guts start to spill. With rattlesnake fangs. That is your record of the week for episode 553, brought to you by your artist of the month, Swollen Members. Yes. That record was so much better than I had any thought of it being i like that I and that's called I like hitting you with stuff balance. that you don't know so uh there were four singles released off of it but none of them charted but they did release four singles off of this i I'm, say lady venom yep um horrified nights no no 
Uh, bottle rocket. Nope. I figured that was the everlasting you, you divine know style funny? one. There's a there's a single released off of here that wasn't on the record. Well, how am I supposed to guess that one? <laughs> I don't know. I, I unless they just completely mistyped it. They have a song on here released as a record called Camouflage, hmm. which might have been camouflaging as committed on the record. I have no been. idea. <laughs> one never knows, does one. <laughs> so with that being said, the other two were Front Street and Strength. Gotcha. And the, the record did chart on the Canadian charts, but not in the U.S. because they are a Canadian group. So Canadian. it stands the reason. Canadian alternative albums. Nice. That's weird. And that's on the Nielsen sound scan. That's not on Billboard. No, because that, it's Canadian. Yeah, that charted at 138. Canadian R&B albums at 81. Canadian rap albums at 43. So is it rap, R&B, or alternative? Because it charted on all three of those records. It is chameleon. <laughs> or camouflage. Yes. <laughs> it's A one song of those so things. good it never even appeared on the album. <laughs> So that is your record of the week for episode 553 balance by swollen members, not membranes, <laughs> cranky <laughs> members. God, I'm, I'm just going to get myself in more and more trouble with this. Uh, yeah. Swollen members with uh, balance and the king and I with contemporary Jeep music. You're one and done. Your artist of the month for September is Swollen Members. Which Bill will be saying every week. <laughs> we have an old to the new. We before do. Before we take our final break. Old to the new from Friend of the Show. Which releases on September 23rd, I believe. But we have been given the express instruction to break this. Yes. So this is the world premiere of the new single by... Gene Allen, professionally known as Groove, friend of the show. This is called Let It Breathe. Uh. Come on. Ladies and gentlemen, I need you to grab your partner and find a place on the dance floor. Don't waste your time, don't be late No hesitation, no time to wait oh. Melody flowing now in the space Sweat with your partner, smile on your face Beat just banging, this just a taste Don't spill your drink, there's no waste I'm the dance man, here to rock the place uh. The voice of the jam, mix with the bass what? Just what you need, I'm in the case what? Don't slow down, keep with the pace I'm sending this out to the whole human race Language is losing for all to embrace I got you tired, I see it in your face Come 
let's dance. Side to side, side to side, let it ride, let it ride, now slide. I love that he throws in the line from House Party when he tells you, he said, I'm Groove, he goes, and I'm getting those digits. I was like, mm-hmm. yes, well done, sir. <laughs> that was friend of the show, Groove with Let It Breathe, the world premiere of his new single coming out September 23rd. 3rd. So uh, look for more from our good friend Gene Groove Allen yes. later on in the month. But thank you so much for sending that to us. We were honored to play that and to bring it to our people. And uh, <laughs> Gail watched the wheel and saw that she won. That's, <laughs> that's really cool. So uh, congratulations, Gail. And uh, we are going to take our final break of the day when we comes back. When we comes back. Yes. Again, you know, too many umlauts. <laughs> When we come back, it'll be time for Bill Reed's lyrics on Mr. Throwback Thursday, episode 553. Some DJs are, some DJs are, some DJs are even. But here's a little something about my DJ. The magnificent Jazzy Jeff. So bust his beat. Hey, this is DJ Jazzy Jeff, and you are checking out my homeboys, Jamie and Bill, on Mr. Throwback Thursday. But it starts with Bill. I'm Bill S. Preston. It's called reading. Top to bottom, left to right. Group words together as a sentence. Take Tylenol for any headaches. Might offer any cramps. Most people probably don't listen to the words, but they should. Welcome to Bill Reads Lyrics. Hello, this is Bill Reads Lyrics. It is an educational discussion of artistic expression and creativity of modern lyricists. Bill may recite explicit or offensive language. Professional supervision is suggested for sensitive listeners. The average views and opinions within these lyrics are not necessarily those of Mr. Throwback Thursday or its hosts, and will be in the area of 160 WPMs. We hope that you will find our presentation precise, humor heavy, and just right. Thanks. I can now unmute myself and say welcome <laughs> back to Mr. Throwback Thursday, episode 553. It is indeed time for Bill Reed's lyrics. It is. As if we need anything else to put into the freaking <laughs> Look, sound I've been good. box for me. I have not been taking from Bill Reed's lyrics in quite a while. No, you haven't actually. No. So, because <laughs> that's a setup, I do that. Uh, the other things are more natural occurrences <laughs> from oh my you. God. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't. It really doesn't. It does not. If it does, um, you should very much be worried. <laughs> you should run away, <laughs> run far away, and very fast. Yes. Um, where would you like me to read from, sir? Verse two, please. Verse two. Yes. Oh, see, this had an intro to it. John would have been very. Uh, happy. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's the. OK, there's verse two. Yes, it says verse two. <laughs> yes. I'm just I'm scrolling down. I'm like, that's verse one hook. Yes. <laughs> which is a, you know, um, was that Blues Traveler song? I guess it was. I was just thinking it was a movie about Peter Pan. All right. So with no type of ado. I'm frightened. <laughs> Sesame Street Grover style weather nearer. Put an umlaut on it. I'm skirted it. <laughs> or further. We, <laughs> we'll <Or> cue <laughs> the motherfucking piano. Stepped outside New York Yankee. Looking for a hoe and some hanky panky. 
pretty long hair or nappy and bald. If you got a clean pussy, I'll fuck you all. It really don't matter to me. You see, I'll fuck your brains out. Sexy or ugly. A girl was on my tip. I had to take her to the crib. Oh, but little did she know that she was an ugly hoe. She must have loved my dick because she was hollering out my name. I fucked her and I fucked her. And no, I'm not ashamed. Spit, slob, juicy lips, walls to walls, all that juice dripping off my balls. You might be ugly or you might be cute, but either one, it don't matter. I could still fuck you if you was ugly and I fucked you. I got taste, but keep in mind that your pussy ain't got no face. No face. <laughs> Not a toast face. <laughs> Not a scar face. I was going to say, does that make him the no face <laughs> drill? Oh, it very well may, yes. Is that? <laughs> It is now time to change the hat. It is. So if you would go from Bill to Phil, you can proceed to take us home. The hat is now changed. That's against the rules of nicknames. Felicia's had that same damn nickname no, no, for four years. Talking about uh, Justin Jefferson calling himself oh, Jets. Calling himself. Yes. You don't yes. ever give yourself a nickname. Nicknames are not given. They are assigned. Yes. Um, let's go back here. It is time to state that Mr. Throwback Thursday, episode 553, brought to you in part by your friends at Magic Mind. Yes. Magic Mind is your secret to a sharper mind and calm energy. Use our limited offer. It gets you up to 48% off your first subscription or 20% off a one-time purchase. You use the code THROWBACK20 at checkout. And you can claim that at magicmind.com forward slash throwback 20. Also sponsored by Def Rugs. Defrugs.com, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, or X, or whatever you're calling it. Whatever it is. <laughs> at Def Rugs. Handmade, high quality hip hop themed rugs brought to you by the original Ruggy Fresh, Marshall Fox, and his business associate, the Green Eyed Bandit, Eric Sermon. Yes. Go get yourself a Def Rug today. <sighs> Our good friend, Heather Lent, up in Schenectady, New York. She's the proprietor of the Bittersweet Candy Company. She makes candy and chocolate that is handmade, small batch, different, and delicious. <laughs> Go to bittersweetcandy.com. Use the code THROWBACK and save 10% off your order at bittersweetcandy.com. Melted Mike's, our good friend, Pumice T. Mandola, is the proprietor of Melted Mike's. He makes hip-hop-themed T-shirts. And you can get those at MeltedMikes.com, M-L-T-D-M-I-C-S.com. Use the code MR Throwback Thursday at checkout saves you 10% off your order at MeltedMikes.com. Etsy.com slash shop slash geek like you, where the geeks shall inherit the earth. Hip hop and pop culture themed items from the sick, twisted mind of Mr. Throwback Thursday and his sick, twisted wife, Mrs. Throwback Thursday who I will be facing in week one of the <laughs> Fantasy Football League. So go to Etsy.com slash shop slash geek like you, where the geek shall inherit the earth. Oh, I forgot to show this. The mayor. <laughs> the mayor don't bother nobody and don't, <laughs> don't nobody bother, bother the mayor. mayor. <laughs> that was obtained from MeltedMikes.com with the 10% discount for using MR Throwback Thursday. Social media network for the show. Don't forget to visit us at MRThrowbackThursday.com. You can see the Posse Wall of Fame and check out Mr. Cranky Pants' ridiculous artwork that he had done this weekend. Yes. Uh, thank you again so much. I, we joke with him all the time about being cranky, but that is like the coolest thing I have Hell seen yes. in the 10 years we've done this show. For anybody who happened to have missed it, uh, Let's put that back up there again. There it is. Mr. Cranky Pants, TBT Posse member since 2022. That is permanent. <laughs> yep. 
that's uh, designed in our license plate hat logo. Yeah. So thank you once again, Brian, for that. Um, so visit MrThrowbackThursday.com if you want. You can leave a uh, voice message as well by clicking that microphone that says hit us up. You can also follow us on our socials, Twitter or X at the underscore MR underscore TBT and Bill underscore MR underscore TBT. Also my Instagram and threads handle Jamie on Instagram and threads is at MR throwback Thursday, which is also our TikTok handle. You can catch snippets of the show that we post to TikTok because we do that from time to time and they haven't taken anything off. Yeah. Um, Yes, he also loves other forms of pain. <laughs> we are the cause of pain even when we're not on the air. Yes, Gotta not just it. to your ears. <laughs> like the Facebook page, uh, Mr. Throwback Thursday, the Mr. Throwback Thursday podcast and home of the TBT Posse. Three Facebook and pages that, for you to that. check out. <laughs> check us out every Thursday morning, 10 a.m. Eastern on Fresh Radio at itsfreshradio.com. We are on after the all request Thursday. And if you wish, you can send us emails to mrthrowbackthursday at gmail.com. Shout outs. Yay, yay. We are going to shout out our two contest winners today. Nice. We will start with Gail Dunmire. Congratulations, Gail. Enjoy your one of zero. We are also going to shout out second contest winner, Jason Heath. Yes. Congratulations, Jason. Enjoy your one of zero. And can I mention real quick, uh, there was a, a third mug uh, that we had made, it looked like this one. Yes. Oh, that's right. It is this one. It is that one. Um, this one is going to the owner of the first and currently only TBT Posse tattoo. Congratulations, Brian. Let's send that out to him. Very cool. Enjoy that, my friend. Also, you a one of it. none. A one of none. Yes. Um, so we'll add him as the third shout out. Yeah, that would be Mr. Cranky Pants, Brian Hollenbeck. The rest of the shout outs, Manny Baez, Sarah Henderson, John Henderson, Hugo Gonzalez, Sankat Patel, Clay Arsenault, the Shrieking Warrior, Jennifer Buchanan, Jessica Walker, Shane Hatley, Ricky Schnarr, Kenneth Elsfelder, Kevin Van Buren, the legend Kevin Van yes. Buren, Rob Jeffroy, Kate Harvey. Catherine Liska and Wanda Kalamia. They get mentioned every week because I got five on it. or like 1500. Yes. Which is what we <laughs> raised for the hip hop museum. Yes. So thank you all very, very much. So uh, you want to become a patron, go to patreon.com slash MRTBT. Don't forget our friends. As always, check out 1980s now with Will, Kat and John, Anthony, Imran and the rug boy over at Jock and Nerd podcast. Talking Ty at What's the Word podcast where Brooklyn Ty NYC, the hardest working turntablist in the world, DJB at It's Fresh Radio and the Fresh Radio app for your phones. Wild One Radio at wildoneradio.com, where we are on at 7 a.m. Eastern Standard mm -hmm. Time. Go check them out. We are available wherever you get your podcast. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, review, and all of that good stuff. Your input helps our output. Please give us reviews. Um, it sure. helps our <laughs> helps all of our um, analytics and everything yeah, else. When we so reach that, out uh, to sponsors, that's things that they look for. If you if you haven't yet, go to YouTube and subscribe to the Mr. Throwback Thursday yes, channel. It's very easy. Yeah, just click a button. Mm -hmm. Even if you don't want to watch it, just uh, yeah, don't click, click the, the notify button. bell. Just click no subscribe. Just hit subscribed. So um, don't forget to subscribe, rate, review, all of that good stuff. Go find us, share the good word, take good care of yourselves. Have a happy and safe Labor Day, by the way. Yes, for those of you who are going into labor. Once <laughs> once again, do not drink and drive. Um, this is the most monitored weekend of the year for police activity, believe it or not. Mm, nice. Um, so don't drink and drive. Call an Uber. Call a friend. Call Bill. Call somebody. If I'm local to you, yes, call me. You know, my daughter rides these roads. Mm -hmm. I don't want your ass out there drunk on the same roads as my kid. So selfishly, and, I'll come and, get you. And my kid who just turned 21. Yes. And a ha very happy birthday to uh, Alex on his 21st birthday. Mm. I liked his opening purchase, too, by the way. <laughs> yes, the I very Alex purchase. Yes. <laughs> so go find us. Share the good word. Take good care of yourselves. Wash your hands. Wash your butt. 
And until next time, everybody, please keep it classic. And like cool Keith said, smooth as oodles of noodles and chow mein. If you go out late, I'll hang and sweat like jerry curls on pootie tang. Chicken chow mein, man. And always remember, new school stale, old school fresh. Thank you.